Laudator Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ, and a most warm welcome to all of you who are joining us for this liturgy, which Pope Francis will preside over shortly, on the occasion of the Solemnity of Christ the King, the last Sunday in the liturgical year, the last Sunday of Ordinary Time. We're coming to you from the cathedral in Asti, Italy, dedicated to the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Gotthard. Today, the Church also observes the 37th World Youth Day being observed in the local churches, and the theme is, Mary arose and went with haste. We now see our Holy Father uh, coming down the aisle in the cathedral and greeting the people who are there. This may be the cousin that he went to visit for her 90th birthday. They're speaking on a very familiar level and most likely here the Bishop of Asti, Marco Prastaro. On behalf of Vatican Media, from wherever you are joining us, whatever time of the day or night, I'd like to welcome all of you to this live broadcast. We know many of you tune in through our own Vatican Media channels, the Vatican News English web portal, Facebook live feed, or our YouTube channel. We also have apps you may be connecting to us with, the Vatican News app or the Radio Vaticana app. Others joining through television, a most warm welcome to those of you joining through Catholic TV, EWTN, Salt and Light Media, at Madarshan TV or Catholic Faith Network. radio listeners tuning in as well, some of you through Radio Maria in England and others through Luminous Radio, still others joining through other shortwave uh, radio signals, other diocesan or local radio stations, and some through other digital platforms. A most warm welcome to all of you for joining us. The Mass today will be celebrated in Italian. We'll be following the liturgy for Christ the King. My name is Sister Bernadette. It's a pleasure, as always, to provide the English texts and translations for you. So many of you are probably wondering, why is Pope Francis here in Asti? We're in the northern part of Italy, in the Piedmont region. And Pope Francis, it was announced on Wednesday, the 19th of October, by the Prefecture of the Pontifical Household that Pope Francis would travel here in order to be on hand to celebrate the 90th birthday of one of his cousins. A statement specified that he would be meeting privately with members of his extended family and that today the Pope would preside at Mass in Osti's Cathedral to meet the diocesan community that his parents left when they emigrated to Argentina. Bishop Marco Prastaro of Asti said at that time that They were all very happy to receive that news and they would do everything to welcome Pope Francis and also to respect his wish that the visit remain private. You can see a video of that on uh, the Vatican News uh, channels uh, on our website and Facebook pages. Pope Francis himself was born in Buenos Aires in 1936 on the 17th of December. His father, Mario José Bergoglio, was an accountant born in Porta Camaro in the province of Asti. And his family emigrated to Argentina in 1929. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. This feast was instituted not too long ago on the universal level 
in an encyclical issued in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. And in that document, the encyclical Quas Primas, he reminded everyone that the first ecumenical council that took place in Nicaea in Asia Minor in 325 concerned a heresy regarding Christ's divinity. And that is where we get the, the part of the Nicene Creed that Christ is God, uh, God from God, light from light. And in 1925, Pope Pius XI said that the best way for people to acknowledge Christ's kingship rather than doctrines or formulas was by celebration, an annual celebration of this sacred mystery is, more, is uh, by far more effective than any official pronouncement of the teaching of the church, he said in that document. He said, uh, dogmatic pronouncements usually reach only a few and the more learned among the faithful, but feasts reach everyone. Uh, a pronouncement speaks only once, but a feast day speaks every year, or rather forever, he said. The original date set for this feast was the Sunday prior to All Saints Day, that is the last Sunday of October, but with the liturgical reform of 1969, it was moved to the last Sunday of the liturgical year, thus highlighting that Jesus Christ, our King, is the destination, the goal of our earthly pilgrimage. And today we will hear readings that will help us enter into the mystery that we celebrate today. And uh, this is in a way also a day for Pope Francis to return to his roots. He's often reminding us on various occasions how important our familial and cultural roots are. And he himself is giving us an example, returning to the community in Piedmont that formed his own grandparents and his parents. And the Piedmont region has also given the church many important people, St. John Bosco, for instance, and Maria Mazzarello, who founded with him the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians and also the Salesian priests and brothers. John Bosco from the Piedmont region as well, as well as the founder of the Pauline family, Blessed James Alberione, and many of the first followers who have given the church uh, voice, you might say, and the many means of communication. And so in a way, uh, this Piedmont culture, th also through Pope Francis primarily, belongs also to, to many of us, since that culture also formed him as our present Pope. Pope Francis has often talked about his own grandmother, his Nona Rosa. His Pope Francis' mother was born in Argentina, and that it was through his mother who personally communicated the Christian faith through him, and he always uses the phrase in dialect. Uh, we might be hearing some Piedmontese dialect today. And Pope Francis has often recalled that uh, the faith is transmitted uh, primarily through the language spoken and the rituals within our families. And then he says that's because that is where the gospel tastes like home. Pope Francis, for those of us who translate for him, often comes out with words in the Piedmontese dialect, which makes it a bit difficult for us to translate at times. And because he learned that dialect uh, from his parents growing up in Buenos Aires, thousands 
of kilometers and miles from where that dialogue, dialect originated. Pope Francis often shares other anecdotes about growing up, sometimes intertwining them with the poems that he has often found striking. For example, one poem by a German poet, Friedrich Holderlin, he dedicated to his grandmother on her birthday. He's also used another from an Argentinian poet. Pope Francis also has very often told us how memory is not to be venerated like ashes in an urn, but we safeguard the memories that we have from our families and our former lives, how God has journeyed with us through the centuries, through our ancestors, but uh, with us particularly and personally. Wisdom of time, he said, cannot be separated from the momentum of tomorrow. And it's interesting that he should visit today on the Feast of Christ the King, an event, of course, or a person whom we adore as the center of all history, who with the Father is ever-changing and ever new. It's interesting as we will see images of Pope Francis's cousin throughout. Uh, interesting to, to know what it's like to be a family member of a Pope. We can just imagine one of our own cousins or family members being a Pope, knowing them so well. The cathedral we're in today it's likely that the first uh, construction of the cathedral began around the 5th or 6th century. And tradition has it that it replaced a series of other earlier buildings, including a primitive church built on the crypt of the martyred Saint Secundus of Asti. Still, parts of which still standing is uh, St. John's Church, which today is used for baptisms. The original building collapsed around 1070, partly as a result of a fire set by Adelaide of Susa in her dispute with the bishops, Susa being a, a small town on the in the foothills of uh, the Alps, the French Alps. In 1095, the rebuilt cathedral was consecrated by Pope Urban II. And it was there that the first crusade was also preached. bell tower uh, built around 1266. It's a seven floor structure and it also has an oct octagonal spire. can enjoy these beautiful images coming to us. As 
I said, we're also celebrating at the diocesan level the World Youth Day, the 37th World Youth Day, which was recently moved from Palm Sunday to the Solemnity of Christ the King. This day being celebrated, here we see the, the bell tower. The theme, Mary Arose and Went with Haste, will also be that used for next year's World Youth Day being celebrated in Lisbon in Portugal. And it follows on the theme of uh, Panama World Youth Day, which was, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. In 2020, the theme, Young Man, I Say to You, Arise, taken from the, the raising of the son of the widow of Nain. And 2021, the theme was Arise, I appoint you as a witness of what you have seen, taken from the Acts of the Apostles. But now uh, Pope Francis is asking all of us to travel toward the next World Youth Day in Lisbon with the Virgin of Nazareth at our side, who immediately after the Annunciation arose and went with haste. The common word among all these themes, as the Holy Father reminds us in his message for today, is arise. He says it's a word that also speaks to us of getting up from our slumber, waking up to the life that's all around us. He said, in these troubling times when our human family, already tested by the trauma of the pandemic, is racked by the tragedy of war, Mary shows to all of us, and especially to you young people, like herself, the path of proximity and encounter. I hope and I firmly believe that the experience many of you will have in Lisbon next August will represent a new beginning for you. Pope Francis always reminding us that Our Lady herself, uh, at the time when Luke says that Mary arose and went with haste, was a teenager. So this, in a way, a model of what teenage years should be like, getting up and going out to those who are in need. In fact, Pope Francis continues in his message that after the Annunciation, Mary could have focused on herself and her own worries and fears about her new condition. I mean, after all, she, a teenager, newly knowing that she was pregnant with a son uh, who she could not point a finger who the father was. But instead, the Pope reminds us, Mary entrusted herself completely to God. And instead of worrying about herself, her thoughts turned to Elizabeth, whom she heard from the angel was six months along in a pregnancy. That could have been very dangerous for a woman who was elderly. Pope Francis says, even though the astonishing message of the angel had caused a seismic shift in Mary's own plans, the young virgin did not remain paralyzed, for she had Jesus himself within her, the power of the resurrection and new life which as we know through baptism, we too have this life within us. Pope Francis says that within herself, Mary already bore the lamb that was slain and yet who lives again. And so she arises and sets out, certain that God's plan is the best plan for her life. And Mary becomes a temple of God, an image of 
the Pilgrim Church, a church that goes out in service, a church that brings the good news to everyone. But we know that the church cannot do that unless its members do that, because it's the members of the body of Christ, the members that bear Christ within them that are the church. It's you and me. Today we're called in a special way to meditate on the mystery of Christ the King who we bear within us through our baptism. Mary shows us how to serve that King. After she says, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be done to me, as you say, she discovers her mission. She gets up and she goes to bring that new life within her to someone else. So Pope Francis says the mother of the Lord is a model for young people on the move who refuse to stand in front of a mirror to contemplate themselves or to get caught up in the net. Mary's focus is always directed outward. She is the woman of Easter in a permanent state of exodus going forth from herself towards that great other who is God and toward others, her brothers and sisters, especially those in greatest need, like her cousin Elizabeth. Our Holy Father, uh, we see him now He is in a wheelchair, as we know, suffering from pain in his knee. He is now being taken in his wheelchair up to the cathedra, which has been set here for him. We hear the entrance hymn, Glory to You, Christ Jesus. to you Christ Jesus today and always you will reign glory to you come soon you are our only hope
Heavenly Father now in the the cope, the vestments of the presider, and the entrance procession now making its way through the cathedral. celebrating now venerating the altar Celebrant now the Bishop of Asti, Marco Prestaro, incensing the altar on which our Lord will once again renew the sacrifice on the cross through which he became our King. Once again, for those of you following in a missal, we will follow the liturgy for the Feast of Christ the King, and we will also have the rite of the installation of an acolyte. Our Holy Father now begins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Spirit of God. Amen. La pace sia con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Fratelli e sorelle, Brothers and sisters, at the beginning of this Eucharistic celebration on the solemnity of Christ, the King of the universe, we invoke God's mercy so that we might be worthy to celebrate these holy mysteries.
onnipotente abbia misericordia di noi, perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna. Preghiamo. Dio onnipotente ed eterno, che hai voluto ricapitolare tutte le cose in Cristo tuo Figlio, Re dell'Universo, fa che ogni creatura libera dalla schiavitù del peccato ti serva e ti lodi senza fine. Per il nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio, che Dio e vive e regna con te, Nell'unità dello Spirito Santo per tutti i secoli dei secoli. And our prayer, Almighty ever living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Our first reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel.
let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. It is there the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, according to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Our second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Fratelli, ringraziate con gioia il Padre che vi ha resi capaci di partecipare alla sua Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or, domi or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The liturgy now proceeds with the Gospel Antiphon.
benedetto il regno che viene del nostro Padre Davide. The deacon bearing the gospel now proceeding to the ambo, our gospel an antiphon. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Il Signore sia con voi. Vangelo secondo Luca. The Gospel proclaimed today from the Gospel according to Luke. Some of the memories recorded of the very last moments of Christ's life. In quel tempo, dopo che ebbero crocifisso Gesù, il popolo stava a vedere. I capi, invece, deridevano Gesù dicendo, ha salvato altri. After having been crucified, the rulers sneered at Jesus and said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself! Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him and said in reply, Have you no fear of God, for you are subject to the same condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And here we have the first part of the installation of an acolyte. The candidate to the ministry of acolyte, Stefano Acornero, is presented, and he responds, here I am. And we will now hear the homily our Holy Father has prepared for this occasion the Solemnity of Christ the King from the Cathedral in Asti, the Piedmont region in northern Italy. We've seen this young man, Stefano, who asks to be instituted as an acolyte. It's in his step in the process of becoming a priest. And here we see Stefano. We should pray for him so that he might go ahead in his vocation, that he might be faithful. And we must pray for the Church of Asti so that the Lord might send it 
priestly vocations. Because as you see, the majority of the priests are old like me. And we need young priests. Let us pray to the Lord that he might bless this land. And from these lands, my father set out as an immigrant to Argentina, and to these lands, rendered precious by the rich fruits of the soil, and above all by the native industriousness of their people, I have now returned to rediscover and savor my roots. Today, too, once again, the gospel brings us back to the roots of our faith. Those roots are planted in the barren soil of Calvary, where Jesus, like the seed that falls to the earth and dies, made hope spring up. Planted in the heart of the earth, he opened the way to heaven. By his death, he gave us eternal life. From the wood of the cross, he brought us the fruits of salvation. Let us then gaze upon him. Let us look upon the crucified one. On the cross, we see a single phrase. This is the King of the Jews. That is Jesus' title, King. Yet as we gaze upon him, our idea of a king is turned upside down. When we try to visualize a king, what comes to mind is a powerful man seated on a throne with magnificent insignia, a scepter in his hand, and precious rings on his fingers, speaking in solemn tones to his subjects. That, more or less, is what we imagine. But looking at Jesus, we see completely the opposite. He is not comfortable. He's not seating, sitting on a comfortable throne, but he's hanging on a cross. The God who casts down the mighty from their thrones appears as a slave, executed by those in power, appareled only with nails and thorns, stripped of everything yet rich in love. From his throne on the cross, he no longer teaches the crowds by his words. He no longer lifts up his hands as a teacher. He does more. He points a finger at no one, but he opens his arms to everyone. This is how he shows himself as our king with open arms, and then he repeated it in Piemonte's dialect. Only by entering into his embrace do we understand. We're pushed there to realize that God went to that extreme, even to the paradox of the cross, in order to embrace every one of us. No matter how far distant we may be from him, he embraces our death, our pain, our poverty, our weakness, our misery, he embraces all of this. He became a servant so that each one of us might feel ourselves as a son. Through his becoming a servant, we have become sons, children. He let himself be insulted and derided so that whenever we are insulted, we would never feel alone. He let himself be stripped of his garments so that no one would ever feel stripped of his or her rightful dignity. He ascended the cross so that God would be present in every crucified man or woman throughout history. This is our king, the king of the universe. For he journeyed to the furthest confines of our human experience, entered into the black holes of hatred and abandonment in order to bring light to every life and to embrace every reality. My brothers and sisters, this is the king that we celebrate today, that we praise today. It's not easy to understand, but he is our king. And the question we ought to be asking is this, is this king of the universe also the king of my life? Do I believe in him? How can I praise him as the Lord of all creation unless he also is the Lord of my life? And you today who begins this journey toward the priesthood, don't forget that this is your model, not the honors. No, it's this. If you're not a priest like this, it's... So let us look once more upon the crucified Jesus. Let us look at him. 
He does not look at our life only for a brief moment or give us the same kind of fleeting glance that so often we give to him. No. No, he stays there with open arms to say to you in silence that nothing about you is foreign to him. He wants to embrace you, to lift you up, and to save you just as you are with your past history, your failings, and your sins. He gives you a chance to reign. We have to think of our own poverty. You, you actually love me with the spiritual poverty that I have, with my limitations, and he'll smile. And he'll make you understand that, yes, he loves you. He gave his life for me, for you. Let's think a little bit about our limitations, even, the, even our good things. He accepts us just as we are, just as we are right now. He gives us a chance to reign in this life if we surrender to his meek love that proposes but not impose it, but is not imposed. The Lord never imposes. It's a love that always forgives. How many times we get tired of forgiving others and we crucify others and, and bury others, but God never gets tired of forgiving, never. He always puts us on our feet. He always restores our royal dignity. Yes, salvation, where does it come from? From allowing ourselves to be loved by him. For only in this way are we liberated from slavery to ourselves, from the fear of being alone and from thinking we can't succeed. My brothers and sisters, let us often stand before the crucified Lord and allow ourselves to be loved because those open arms are also also open heaven to us as they did to the good thief. Let us hear addressed to us today the only words that Jesus today speaks from the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. What God is saying is what God is saying to all of us is that whenever we let him look upon us, we realize that our God is not an unknown God up in the heavens, powerful and really far away, but he's rather a God who is very close, a, a tender and compassionate closeness. This is God's style. He has no other style. Close, tender, and merciful, tender and compassionate, whose open arms console and caress us. This is our King. Brothers and sisters, once we've gazed upon him, what can we do? Today's gospel sets before us two paths. In front of Jesus, there are those who become onlookers and those who get involved. The onlookers, the many, are the majority. It's a, it's a, a quite a scene to see someone dying on the cross. And in fact, the text tells us this. The people are standing by watching. They're not bad people. No, they're not bad people. Many of them were believers. But at the sight of the crucified Lord, they remain onlookers, spectators. They don't take a step forward toward Jesus, but they look at him from afar. They're curious, but they're indifferent without really being interested, without asking themselves what they could do. They would have made their own comments, expressed their judgments and their opinions. Is he innocent? Oh, I don't know. Some of them would have grieved, but all of them stood by and looked on. Hand in hand, maybe with their arms linked together, but closer to the cross were other onlookers. They were the leaders of the people. They were there to watch the grim spectacle of the ignominious end of the Christ. And then there were the soldiers who hoped that the execution would get over quickly so they could go home. And one of the criminals released all his rage. They mock, they jeer. 
they vent their anger. All of these onlookers repeat a a, a refrain that the text repeats three times. If you are a king, then save yourself. They insult him that way. Save yourself. This is precisely the opposite of what Jesus is doing, who's not thinking of saving himself, but of saving them. And yet, those words, save yourself, they're very contagious. They spread from the leaders to the soldiers and then to the people. And let's think that evil is contagious. It can it contaminates us. Like when we when, when we um, go down with a contagious illness, contagious immediately. It's the lethal infection of indifference. It doesn't touch me. It, indifference toward Jesus, also indifference toward those who are ill, toward the poor people, the miserable people bow to the ground. I like to ask people, and I ask all of you, I know that each one of you give alms to the poor, but I ask you, when you give alms to the poor, do you look at them in, the, in their eyes? Are you capable of looking at them in their eyes, that poor person that asks you for alms? When you give alms, do you just throw it into their hands, or do you touch them? Are you capable of touching human misery? Each one can answer this themselves today. The, the people are indifferent. They talk about Jesus, but they don't empathize with him. This is the lethal infection of indifference. And the ripple of evil always swells like this. It starts with taking a bit of distance, watching, but not doing anything, not being concerned. And then we think only of what has to do with us, what we're interested in, and we grow used to turning aside. This is also a risk for our own faith, which withers if it remains merely a theory and is not put into practice. If we remain detached, aloof, and uninvolved, if we don't become personally involved. And then we become rosewater Christians, as I've heard it said at, in my own home, who say they believe in God and who want peace, but they don't pray and they don't take care of their neighbor. They're only Christians in name only. They're very superficial. They, they want peace, but don't do anything to make peace. So there's, this is one aspect under the cross, but there's also another path out of goodness. Amid all those onlookers, one person does get involved, the good thief. The others mock the Lord, but the good thief turns to Jesus and calls him by name, Jesus. Many jeer at Jesus, but he confesses his faults to Jesus. Many shout, save yourself, but he begs, remember me. That's all he asks of the Lord in his prayer. If each one of us say this prayer every day, it's, this is a good path. It, this is the path of holiness. Jesus, remember me. And in this way, a criminal becomes the first saint. He draws near to Jesus for an instant, and the Lord keeps him forever at his side. The Gospel speaks of the good thief for our own benefit, to invite us to overcome evil by stopping to remain onlookers, that we stop being indifferent. And where do we begin with trust? By calling God by name, exactly as the good thief did. 
who at the end of his life, he discovered anew the fearless confidence of children who trust and ask and keep asking. In confidence and trust, he admits his faults. He weeps not for himself, but in the presence of the Lord. What about us? Do we have the same trust? Do we bring to Jesus what we hold in the depths of our hearts, or do we mask ourselves before God? perhaps even with a little bit of ritual and incense. Please don't, don't exercise the spirituality of putting on makeup. Let's wash it off with soap and, and go exactly as we are, and that's how we will be saved. Those who practice confident trust as this good thief learn to intercede. They learn to bring to God what they see all around him, the sufferings of the world, the people they meet, and say to Jesus like the good thief, Lord, remember me. Remember, Lord. We are not in this world just to save ourselves, but to bring our brothers and sisters into the embrace of our King. Intercession, asking the Lord to remember, opens the gates of heaven. When we pray, do we intercede? Remember, Lord, please remember. Remember me, remember my family. Remember this problem, remember, remember. Draw the Lord's attention. Brothers and sisters, today, our King from the cross looks upon us with open arms. It is up to us to choose whether we will be onlookers or those who get involved. Am I an onlooker or do I want to be involved? We see the crises of the present time, the decline of faith, the lack of participation. What are we going to do? Are we content to theorize and criticize? Or are we going to roll up our sleeves, take life in hand, and pass from taking refuge in excuses to the commitment of prayer and service. All of us think we know what is wrong with society. All of us talk about this every day. Even what doesn't go right in the church, and many things don't aren't going right in the church, but do we do something? Do we get our hands dirty like our God, nailed to the cross? Or do we stand with our hands in our pockets and just look around? Today, as Jesus, naked on the cross, takes away every veil that veils God and destroys every false image of his kingship, let us look at him and thus find the courage to look at ourselves, to follow the path of confident trust and intercession, to make ourselves servants in order to reign with him. Remember, Lord. Remember. Let's pray this prayer more often. The words of our Holy Father spoken on the solemnity of Christ the King here in the Cathedral of Osti, not too far where, from where his own father grew up. Our Holy Father reminding us of our own need to make a choice today to remain onlookers or to get involved with our own Lord's kingship. And we will see this now enacted as Stefano Acornero, as we heard on his way to the priesthood, receives the order of acolyte. Dear son, chosen for the ministry of acolyte, you will have a special role in the church's ministry. The summit and source of the church's life is the Eucharist, which builds up the Christian community and makes it grow. It is your responsibility to assist priests and deacons in carrying out their ministry and as special ministers to give Holy Communion to the faithful at the liturgy and to the sick. Because you are specially called to this ministry, you should strive to live more fully by the Lord's sacrifice and to be molded more perfectly in its likeness. 
Seek to understand the deep spiritual meaning of what you do so that you may offer yourself daily to God as a spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In performing your ministry, bear in mind that as you share the one bread with your brothers and sisters, so you form one body with them. Show especially the poor and the sick. Show a sincere love for Christ's mystical body. Be obedient to the commandment which the Lord gave to his apostles at the Last Supper. Love one another as I also have loved you. And now let us pray humbly to God. Our Father, that this our brother, Stefano, chosen by him to serve in the ministry of Acolyte, might receive his abundant blessing that he might be confirmed in faithful service to the church. Padre Clementissimo, che permesso del tuo unico figlio, God of mercy, through your only son, you entrusted the Eucharist into the hands of your church. Bless this your son, who has been chosen for the ministry of Acolyte. Grant that he may be faithful in the service of your altar and in giving others the bread of life. May he always grow in faith and love and so build up your church through Christ our Lord. Take this vessel with the bread and wine for the celebration of the Eucharist. Make your life worthy of your service at the table of the Lord and his church. And our Holy Father greeting the newly instituted acolyte and we continue this liturgy now with the proclamation of our common faith. Dear brothers and sisters, through Jesus, King of justice and peace, we lift up our common prayer to the Father. For the Church, May she express in the world the new justice that Jesus promulgated from the cross.
Per il Santo Padre, il Papa Francesco. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Il Signore Dio. May the Lord grant him life and health. Conserve him in the church as leader and pastor of the holy people of God. Per i popoli che soffrono a causa della guerra. For those who suffer because of war. May the arms be silenced and may hate and the thirst for vengeance be extinguished throughout the entire world. Per tutti coloro che soffrono a causa For all who suffer due to the current economic situation and for those who have lost their jobs, may they find comfort and assistance in us. Per i giovani della nostra diocesi, E di tutto il mondo. For the young people in our diocese and throughout the entire world, may they be joyful missionaries and witnesses of the gospel. O oh God and Almighty Father, you who have broken the chains of sin and death through the cross which your Son embraced, grant that we might always work for the coming of his kingdom. And at this moment, we move from the Liturgy of the Word to the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And it is here that uh, Stefano will now begin his new ministry as Acolyte. Our proclamation of the creed today was accompanied by images we see now at, on the roof of the cathedral, which have the words of the creed as well as images. gifts now being presented to Pope Francis. celebrant Bishop Marco Prastaro now offering the bread and the wine which will soon become the 
body and blood of our Lord. Bishop now incensing the crucifix from which Jesus, the Son of God, reigns. having also incensed the celebrant now incense incenses the Holy Father the two main ministers in this Eucharistic celebration and the faithful here the body of Christ now also being incensed we also enter into this sacrifice offering now to the Father, the most perfect sacrifice of praise. Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché questo nostro famiglia radunata dallo Spirito Santo nel nome di Cristo possa offrire il sacrificio gradito a Dio, Padre Onnipotente. Il Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Ti offriamo, Padre, il sacrificio di Cristo per la nostra riconciliazione. E ti preghiamo. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. E con il tuo Spirito. In alto i nostri cuori. Sono al Signore. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. E veramente cosa buona. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and, making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty as an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
veramente santo sei tuo Padre, fonte di ogni santità. Ti preghiamo, santifica questi doni con la rugiada del tuo Spirito, perché diventino per noi il corpo e il sangue del Signore nostro, Gesù Cristo. Egli, consegnandosi volontariamente alla passione, prese il pane, rese grazie, lo spezzò, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse «Prendete e mangiatene tutti, questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi». Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese il calice. Di nuovo ti rese grazie, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse «Prendete e bevetene tutti». Questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. Today you will be with me in paradise. Mistero della fede Annunciamo la tua morte, Signore Proclamiamo la tua risurrezione Nell'attesa della tua venuta Celebrando il memorabile della morte e risurrezione del tuo figlio ti offriamo padre il pane della vita e il calice della salvezza e ti rendiamo grazie perché ci hai resi degni di stare alla tua presenza a compiere il servizio sacerdotale ti preghiamo umilmente per la comunione al corpo e al sangue di Cristo lo Spirito Santo ci riunisca in un solo corpo Ricordati, Padre, della tua Chiesa diffusa su tutta la terra e qui convocata nel giorno in cui Cristo ha vinto la morte e ci ha reso partecipi della sua vita immortale. Rendila perfetta nell'amore, in unione con il nostro Papa Francesco, il nostro Vescovo Marco, i presbiteri e i diaconi. Ricordati anche dei nostri fratelli e sorelle che si sono addormentati nella speranza della risurrezione e nella tua misericordia di tutti i defunti, ammettili alla luce del tuo volto. Di noi tutti abbi misericordia, donaci di aver parte alla vita eterna insieme con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, San Giuseppe suo Sposo, gli Apostoli, San Secondo e tutti i Santi che in ogni tempo ti furono graditi e in Gesù Cristo tuo Figlio canteremo la tua lode e la tua gloria. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo a te Dio Padre Onnipotente Nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. We will now be invited to pray the Lord's Prayer. Signore che venga al suo regno di pace e giustizia, preghiamo come Gesù ci ha insegnato. Padre nostro che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il tuo nome, venga il tuo regno, sia fatta la
liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento, nell'attesa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace, non guardare ai nostri peccati, ma alla fede della tua Chiesa, e donale unità e pace secondo la tua volontà, tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Scambiatevi il dono della pace. And we too can exchange the gift of peace with those around us at this time. Ecco l'agnello di Dio, ecco colui che toglie i peccati del mondo, beati gli invitati alla cena dell'agnello. And we also can say, O oh Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The concelebrants beginning now to go toward the altar where they too will receive the body and blood of our Lord.
once those here in the cathedral receive the body and blood of our Lord, we too can ask him to come to us spiritually wherever we are. people outside the cathedral uh, being able to receive our Lord today. Here we also see the new acolyte, Stefano, giving the body and blood of our Lord to the members of Christ's holy, faithful people of God, as we heard the Holy Father say to him. What a gift to give our Lord in Holy Communion to our brothers and sisters. Acolyte is a word that derives from the Greek term akolotos, which means server, companion, or follower. And in the Latin church, a person is installed in the ministry of acolyte in order to assist the deacon and priest in liturgical celebrations. It still remains a step on the way to priesthood as this young man is on his way to becoming a priest in order to receive the ministry of acolyte. The person first is a candidate and then a lector, which means that the person needs to have at least five years of seminary formation. As we know, this ministry ha was opened after the Vatican Council also to men and most recently also opened to women uh, with the apostolic letter Spiritus Domini. The ministry in its concrete exercise intended to highlight the intimate bond that exists between the liturgy the Eucharist and charity.
the people now here in the cathedral seated for a moment of silent prayer and reflection after having received our Lord. A long-awaited moment being able to celebrate this Eucharistic liturgy with the Holy Father whose parents themselves came from Porta Comaro, about 10 kilometers east of the city of Asti, where this cathedral is located. We now continue our liturgy with the prayer after communion. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom. Santo Padre, al termine di questa celebrazione eucaristica, desidero ringraziarla a nome di tutta la comunità astigiana per questo incontro che abbiamo tanto atteso. Quando lei venne eletto Papa, in quella sera disse che era stato preso quasi alla fine del mondo. E oggi, forse con un po' di orgoglio, ci piace pensare che Asti, la terra delle sue radici familiari, possa essere l'inizio del mondo. E lo è veramente, perché qui con lei abbiamo rinnovato le radici della nostra fede. Le Holy Father, at the end of this Eucharistic celebration, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the entire community for this meeting. When you were elected Pope, you said they went almost to the end of the world to get you. And so today we're proud and happy to think that Asti, the land of your family roots, is the beginning of the world, and so it is. The Eucharist, the Word of God, the Petrine Ministry, the fraternity that makes us think of community, the presence of the poor, the flesh of Christ, everything speaks to us of the presence of Christ among us here where we've renewed the roots of our faith with you. Here at the beginning of the world today, we renew our missionary commitment to bring the joy of the gospel to the ends of the world, to every existential periphery that we come into contact with. With all our heart, we thank you for your presence among us and for the time you've dedicated to us. Thank you for having confirmed us in the faith and for the particular affection that you have shown to us. Thank you for your visit, and come back when you want to this city. In the meantime, we will continue to pray for you. Thank you, Holy Father. The Bishop of Asti now greeting the Holy Father and receiving the customary gift of a chalice now from the Holy Father. And this bishop is courageous to say that Ostia is the beginning of the is the beginning of the world. At the end of this celebration, I would like to express my gratitude to the diocese, to the province, and to the city of Asti. Thank you for the warm welcome you have given me. I am also very grateful to the civil and religious authorities for the preparations that made this awaited visit possible. I would like to say to all of you that, and he speaks in dialect, I was pleased to meet you. And again in dialect, and I wish you all the best. I would like to extend a special thought and send my love to the young people. Thank you for having come out in such numbers today. As of last year, the local churches observe World Youth Day specifically 
on the Solemnity of Christ the King. The theme, the same as the next World Youth Day in Lisbon, I renew my invitation that you participate in it, is Mary arose and went with haste. Our Lady did this when she was young, and she tells us that the secret to remaining young is found precisely in those two words, to arise and to go. I like to think of Our Lady who gets up and goes quickly. She, she always goes hastily, and many times I, I ask Our Lady to quickly uh, resolve things, to arise and to go, not to st stay still thinking about ourselves, wasting our lives, chasing after comfort or the latest fads, but to aim for the heights, to get on the move, leaving behind our own fears to take someone in hand, someone in need by the hand. And today we need young people who are truly transgressives young people who are really transgressives, non-conformists, who are not slaves to their mobile phones, but who change the world like Mary, bearing Jesus to others, taking care of others, building fraternal communities with others, realizing dreams of peace. We are living a famine of peace. Let's think of how many places in the world are scourged by war, in particular of war-torn Ukraine. Let's give ourselves something to do and continue to pray for peace. And let us, we pray for the families in the fire in a refugee camp in Gaza in Palestine where even a few children died. May he, he take into heaven all those who've lost their, who've lost their lives in lands that are torn by conflict for many years. And now let us invoke the Queen of Peace, Our Lady, to whom this beautiful cathedral is dedicated to her. Let us entrust our families, the sick, and each one of us with the worries and good intentions we bear in our hearts. And at this time we now pray the Angelus with our Holy Father. Angelus Domini, Nunziave Maria. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedita tui mulieribus, et benedito fruttus ventis tui Jesus. Ecce Acilla Domini. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, e benedicto frutto venti tui Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Il verbo, un caro facto mesti. E cantitari in nobis. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, e benedicto frutto venti tui Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ora pro nobis, Santa Dei Genetrix. Ut vigna, diciamo, promissionibus Christi. Grazie a Tua, anque sumo Domine, mentre vos nostri si infonde. O di Angelo Annunziante, Christi Fili Tua, incarnazione, in cognovimus, per passione meio sal crucem, a resurrezione e gloria, per tutamo. Per Cristo, un Dominum nostro. Amen. Gloria a Patria, al Figlio, al Spirito e Santo. Si utera di principio, e rinuncia sempre, e di seguito a seguito. Amen. Gloria a Patria, al Figlio, al Spirito e Santo. Si utera di principio, e rinuncia sempre, e di seguito a seguito. Amen. Gloria a Patria, al Figlio, al Spirito e Santo. Si utera di principio, e rinuncia sempre, Ed in secula securorum. Amen. Pro fidelibus de fontis, eis, Domine. Ed lus perpetua luce a teis. Requiescant in pace. Amen. And we await the Holy Father's blessing as he 
rises slowly to his feet now. Benedicat vos, omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. La nostra vita, andate in pace. Rendiamo grazie a Also present to mark this historic visit of Pope Francis to Asti are the mayor of Asti, Maurizio Razzero, as well as the uh, Piedmont region president, Alberto Cirio, and vice president, Fabio Carroso. And today they've conferred honorary citizenship on Pope Francis for his strong commitment to world peace and his daily messages of solidarity and fraternity against all forms of discrimination, values which they have said are written within the statutes of the city of Asti. As well as for the strong link of Pope Francis with Asti and the Piedmontese territory, especially through the continuity of his contacts with his family in the area. And we now bring to an end with these images the live broadcast of this liturgy presided over by Pope Francis on the occasion of the Solemnity of Christ the King. As always, you can find full coverage of today's liturgy and other Vatican and world news on the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter accounts. We'll be back on Wednesday with the general audience. On behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to thank our in-studio production staff, as well as, again, our media partners, Catholic TV, EWTN, Salt and Light TV at Madarshan TV, Catholic Faith Network, Radio Maria in England, Luminous Radio, for Father Pacheco for coordinating all of us commentators, and Patrizio Ciprari for his audio technical assistance today. As we now bid all of you goodbye, let us take the message of the Feast of Christ the King with us, seeking how we might serve him in our brothers and sisters by not standing by watching but getting involved. Laudator Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ.